All right, guys, let's go over lab number two. This is the, the actually the first lab they're going to start on for the sensors. Because um, lab number one covers the magnetorestrictive. I like to start with the inductive sensors. So lab number two is going to be comparing the M12 versus the M18. So remember that the, the 12 is a 12 mils, 18 is an 18 mils. So we're just going to be comparing a smaller inductive sensor to a larger inductive sensor. Those guys are standard sizes, M12 and the M18. Uh, the example that the, they've been given us for Festo is sensing the position of a valve slide. So on the first page here, you can see that they have two different uh, sensors here, and there they're going to see that the valve is either open or shut. Okay, These are the, the units that you're going to need. Now, you'll notice that in the lab, each of the, the components are uh, are labeled and they are disgustingly organized do not screw them up please uh, put them back where you got them okay the first one the m18 if it's not labeled which it is on the back there is also a number that you can reference five four eight six four five the other one we're going to do is the m12 uh, again there's your serial number on the back there uh, and it note, says a note here don't use the analog sensor now, regardless of the fact that I've said don't use the analog sensor, probably 40% of you guys will. The analog sensor has the threads all the way to the end. So you're not going to use that one. You're going to use the two sensors uh, that don't have threads all the way to the end, the ones that aren't shielded. Okay, next thing we need is a 24 volt power supply, uh, the positioning slide, and I'll show you all that in a number of seconds. Um, the only part that we need so far is the number five, the galvanized steel. Um, then they give us this crude diagram of how to, uh, to mount it. I'm gonna show you that in two seconds. And then let's just go over the wiring here, guys. So for this guy, we need to provide it with 24 volts. Now these ones are gonna, this is gonna be 24 volts down to what they label as 24 volts, but that color there uh, would be brown out in the field. For your negative, or your zero reference, that would be your blue, and that's obviously gonna be your zero volts, which I've, for some reason, labeled negative 24 volts. Okay, the output is gonna be off of Q1. Uh, the output on a three-wire inductive sensor is black. So for this guy, Q1 is gonna go to a light, so this is just a symbol for the light, and the light needs to have the same return back to the common. Okay, if you scroll down, you'll also find this chart here. I'm simply asking you guys to go through the, the sensor manual, the cut sheets, and find the size, the sensing range, accuracy, you know, the, the no low current, which I believe they label idle current uh, in the cut sheets. Switching output, right? So you'll see that the, when it's off, it actually pulls a bit of current. The switching output is disgusting. This thing can switch thousands of times a second. Uh, the operating voltage is going to say like 15 to 24 volts, uh, but we know that it's going to run off of 24 volts DC. Okay, uh, As we see, we're just going to take number five and put it into the mounting position, and then you're just going to fill in the switch on and switch off. The hysteresis is the difference between where it's switched on and where it's switched off. First one you're going to do is the M18. Next one you're going to do is the M12. And then which sensor had the greatest sensing distance? Well, uh, let's just think about this for two seconds. If this is a larger sensor, it's going to have a larger coil in the front, larger magnetic field coming out. So you will find that the M18 sees a little bit farther than the M12. All right, let's see what the setup is. All right, guys, so let's go through the components that you need. I've got three different sensors here. Um, so I'm going to eliminate the one that we're not going to use. I don't want you to use this one here that has the threads all the way to the end. It looks exactly the same. It is a 12 mil inductive sensor. Um, it's shielded because there's threads all the way to the end, but it's different in that this guy is an analog sensor. So this one's gonna give us four to 20 milliamps out, or it's gonna give us zero to 10 volts out. So we'll leave this one for a separate lab. Don't use the one with the threads all the way to the end. You can see here that I've got the other two inductive sensors. This guy here is the M12. It's a smaller one compared to the other one right here, the M18. Okay, It's non-shielded, meaning that the, the threads are not all the way to the end. 
Okay, there's no way you can tell whether this is an inductive sensor or a capacitive sensor without hooking it up and testing it out or looking at the cut sheet. The number that I was referencing is on the back here. There's that number 548643. Okay, so M12, we're going to start with the M18. So we'll put the M12 to the side. And let's see the setup here. So you're going to grab this M18 here. Again, this guy is just the same as the M12, just a larger front face, so a larger coil on the front. Um, if you haven't looked up how this inductive sensor works, um, essentially what it's doing is there is a, <clears throat> there's a circuit inside here, um, and all it's doing is it's kind of like a tank circuit where um, the capacitor is dumping current into the coil, doing it thousands of times a second, and so there's a magnetic field that is going to expand and contract from the front face of the sensor. Is it going to go six inches away from the sensor? No way. There's probably, with this guy, I think the maximum we can see if we look at the cut sheet is eight mils in front of this sensor. So you can't really see very far, but they are really effective for looking for the presence of metal. How does it do that? Well, that magnetic field cuts across, in this case, the galvanized steel. We grab number five here, right? So when this guy is in front, you can see that in my circuit, the light has turned off. Move the piece away and it turns off. So what happens is that the magnetic field cuts across the piece of metal. Anytime you have a moving magnetic field in a stationary conductor, you're gonna have currents and voltages that are gonna be induced. So small currents are induced on here, which now screws up the magnetic field of the actual sensor. And then there's an op amp there to see the difference in that circuit. So the currents that get are created here from induction screw up the initial magnetic field. There's an op amp to see that, and it turns on the output, which is most likely going to be a transistor. So it's not just uh, like relay contacts, it's a transistor. So we can get this guy to switch thousands of times a second. So we're going to take number five. We're going to put it into the positioning plate. You can see here that on the back I have now Try to get the slider. There is a little thumb wheel here that you can get the slider to match up. So that is easy now. That is zero mils of travel. Whatever the back of the unit moves, that means that the front of the unit has moved. So we're going to now take this guy, jam it up against the, the sensor here. Okay, so as close as clearance as we can there with the back of the unit at zero. And then we're going to back it off and we'll see where it turns on and where it turns off. Let's move this guy in so we can see it. So the way that this guy is wired up is that I have 24 volts right here at the 24 volts and the zero. That is coming from, in this case, my Festo unit. So it's pushing out 24 volts DC here. So I'm providing this, cir this circuit with 24 volts. The output we saw was off of Q1. This would be your black wire out in the field. Black wire is going over here to my light. And then you can see that all the commons are all connected together. So I'm bringing power to the light and I've got the return going back to my source. One more time, 24 volts. Output is 24 volts going to the light, which operates off of 24 volts and a common bringing it back to my power source. Okay, so now what we'll do is uh, we can move this guy in We've already set it with the, the zero being the, the zero travel there. And you can see that once it gets close enough, then it fires 24 volts to the light. And once you move it farther away, then it turns off. So let's see the travel here. So in order for this guy to, to turn on, let's see if we can get everything in the, the shot. Wait, how's this gonna work? Sorry, guys. Um, let's move the light over here. There we go. Everything's in the shot now. So um, let's see. We're back at about uh, 11 mils, 10 mils, nine, about nine mils. Let's see. Eight and a half, nine mils. Uh, this guy is turning on. Okay, so you can see that you can't, you can't see like six inches in front of the sensor. It's just a, a small distance in front of this inductive sensor. Okay, that's your switch on point, the switch off point is literally a half mil uh, behind, okay? So the reason why there's a difference between the switch on and the switch off point, which would be for us the hysteresis of a half mil to a mil, that's just so that if the piece was actually moving, 
then you wouldn't have it chattering, meaning that if it was really close here, it would be doing this and turning on and turning off. We just want it to turn on or turn off. That half miller or miller difference allows the unit to actually vibrate and not chatter on and off. Excellent. Okay, let's throw in the, the next one, the M12, and we'll see the difference in sensing distance. All right, guys, so we've switched out the M18 for the M12. Uh, exact same setup. You can basically leave everything in place. The only thing you're going to do is turn the power off, disconnect these three wires, and then reconnect the M12. Again, 24 volts, Q1 is going to light. The light has a return back to the source. Okay, and that same setup. You're going to put the slider to zero mils there. And then this one is a smaller uh, sensor. You can see that, uh, I didn't have a wrench with me, but you can see that there's a small difference um, or a gap there between the M12 and the piece of galvanized steel. So you can grab a, a couple of wrenches, change these little lock nuts, then you'll be able to um, get it to seat properly. But when you're trying to get this to, to seat properly, you will find that the slider bumps up against the, the actual unit here. So what you're going to have to do is just lift it up a touch and then slide it in as far as you can and then make sure that this, the back of the slider is at zero mils. If focus would work. There we go, beauty. Okay, so this is a smaller unit, so we'll find that it is got to be, the galvanized steel has got to be a lot closer for it to switch on. So we got 10, 9, 8, where are we at? 7, 6, five, four mils. So four mils plus that gap. So I'm probably about five mils if I had actually done this properly and gotten the unit to be pressed right up against the galvanized steel. Okay, so about five mils. And then again, it's gonna have that small hysteresis. So I should be able to pull this guy back half mil to a mil. And it turns off. Okay, so let me just, like a donkey, I didn't have the, the light in there. Let's try that one more time, guys. There we go. Okay, four mils plus that gap, so we're at five. All right, back it off a mil there, and we're at about I don't know, five mils there plus that that gap there, so about six mils. All right, so my switch on was at five, my switch off was at six, and I got a mil of hysteresis. Okay, these labs aren't sexy, but they do show you the basics on. Uh, each of the sensors. You can see here that if I put a piece of plastic in front of this bad boy, it does not turn on the unit. Okay, it has to be a piece of metal. You will find that in other labs we'll be using a smaller piece of galvanized steel and obviously with a smaller piece we're going to find that it's got to be a lot closer to turn this guy on. But it does, these guys just need to have the piece of metal in front again to create those eddy currents on the front face there which turn on the transistor. Any other type of uh, unit, let's see, plastics are not going to turn this guy on, but we will find in the next labs that different metals, so this guy's copper, can turn this unit on. But for this lab, all we're seeing is that um, the M18 is gonna see a little bit farther than the M12. All right, thanks guys.